It's our Sports Center showcase. Number one, Duke hosting number two, Connecticut. The final two unbeaten's in women's Division One. I like to see how good the Cameron Crazies would be with a bunch of kids that couldn't play. You know, I'm not sure they'd be worth that whole lot of points. You know. UConn head coach Gino Oriema continuing to stir the pot with the Cameron Crazies early first half. Diana Tarasi, NBA three, Huskies six of 16 from long range in the game. Elena Beard's pass stolen. Tarasi spots Ashley Battle, good for two. Make it three. 12 for Battle, all UConn early. They open up a big early lead. Tarasi open for three. UConn laughing it up, they're up nine. Huskies a 15-0 run to close the first half. Will Ned Crockett inside, and Geno's up 41-20 at halftime. Coach, your thoughts? I mean, I know our defense is good, but it was it was better than good in the first half. I mean, we, we had a game plan going in, and, and this time the plan worked to perfection. Had big game experience working out well. Duke didn't have much of it. Early second half, Tarasi touched down to Jessica Moore. Huskies would lead by as much as 28, but Duke mounts a comeback with a 30 to 11 run. Elena Beard steals it from Tarasi. She had 26 on 8 of 19 shooting. The Dukies would get within six, but too much Tarasi. She had 17, and UConn wins in Durham, the longest winning streak in women's college hoop history, now up to 59. So UConn, one win shy of tying San Francisco's 60-game streak, which is second all-time behind UCLA. The Huskies love the one-versus-two matchups. UConn now 8-2 and two in those games, including a 3-0 mark when they are the number two team. For Duke, their 21-game home court winning streak comes to an end in front of their first sellout crowd ever. For number one hopefuls, beginning with Pittsburgh and Syracuse, and not only did Brandon Knight play on that sprained left ankle, he played 40 minutes. Pit up 11, from Anthony gets careless, and Terry Olette makes it 13-point lead for Pitt. But what do you know? The home team cuts 12 points of that away, and Hakeem Warwick, just like that, gives Cuse the lead with three minutes to play, 61-60. Same numbers on the board. Knight driving, lay it in. In those 40 minutes, he put up seven points, seven assists, and has his team up one. 62-61, Jerron Brown from deep. Pitt, 12 straight conference wins, now up four. Same score, 65-61. Keith Dwayne, no sir, but he's going to get it back. Dwayne would convert the Q's down two after a couple of made free throws by Jeremy McNeil, who's a 28% free throw shooter. McNeil gets a put back. Watch here as Lett just kind of leaves McNeil alone, goes to the guy who's penetrating, and McNeil just four points in this game, but they were all clutch. Now on the inbound, Carl Krauser bounces it off his leg, calls timeout, 1.3 on the clock. 1.3. Thing is, you don't get time awarded out until the ref says so. Now the ref blows the whistle. 0.8 left on the clock. There is time for Pitt to get something done. Problem is, we run that sucker down to all zeros, and the fans say, hey, hey, let's play. This is terrific. We win. No. We put 0.8 back on. Knight gets out there, a little shake, throws it up, and would you believe it goes. Problem is, does it count? Fans rush the court. Jim Boheim. Restore order, please. There you go, Jimmy Beheim. Now we got this thing straight. Now we're looking at it again. A night that little shake cost him. Yeah, nothing but zeros. That ball clearly in his hand. And so now you can officially, officially celebrate your 14th straight home win. Cues win at 67-65. Fans were tremendous. The whole game uh, would have been uh, heartbreaking, really, to to lose this game. But they didn't want. They weren't going to let it go. We called a timeout, and uh, I'm curious how they arrived at, at that amount uh, of time. Uh, you know, we probably should have never brought it in. It's called a timeout right away, but, you know, that's not where we lost the game uh, on the last play of the game. We lost it earlier by allowing too many second shots in particular uh, for them on the offense. Because this is the second game in a row now we've been beaten on the boards. The state of Texas feeling Saturday's space shuttle tragedy especially hard. A moment of silence in Austin before the game between number three Texas and 11th ranked Oklahoma State first half. That's Jason Miller and Brian Boddicker. They collide. Boddicker with a nice hip check on Miller and there's no foul call. Later in the first, Ivan McFarlane, a nasty pick. This is just ugly. That's a foul on McFarlane. Texas up two at halftime. Second half, James Thomas. For some defense, block Shane Gatson, T.J. Ford. This guy's everything for Texas. The other way, off balance. He had 17. Mm. Oh, give me a break. The Longhorns are up by 10 later. 
Boddicker again. This is a pick on Andre Williams, and this will open things up for Thomas, who had 13 points and 16 boards. There it is, and here we go. Texas still unbeaten at home this season. Longhorn snapped the Cowboys' 15-game winning streak. Eddie Sutton said about Texas, they're the best team in our league. Billy Donovan's fourth-ranked Florida Gators looking to tie his school record with their 14th straight win, hosting Arkansas. First half watch, Barnell Cole has set the pick. Justin Hamilton slices right down Main Street. Oh, he's wide open. Gators are up by one. Moments later, let's run the same thing, only let's go to a different option. David Lee the pick this time, and Hamilton fakes inside, and he's going to go back door. He had a seven-point Florida lead at halftime. Second half now. Freshman Jonathan Modaka, career high 26. Razorbacks get within five, but the Gators hang on. Brett Nelson here, David Lee there. Lee had 13. Gators tie a school record with their 14th straight win. Their 7-0 SEC start is their best in The magic number certainly didn't trouble him any when he was starting out as the 24-year-old head coach at Army. Said recently that after his first win over Worcester Tech back on December 8, 1965, his main coaching concern was just winning game number two. Now he left Army with 102 wins, left Indiana with a total of 764 and 35 more at Texas Tech, left night 40 minutes from 800. Texas A&M trying to do its best to stay out of night's personal history book. First half, Aggies up eight, and it's Bernard King driving and leaving for Jesse King. And you know what they say, it's good to be the king. Gig him, Aggies, and he built a 25-9 lead, so Knight talks it over with his team and says, please play better. Second half, Andre Emmett plays better, hits the jumper. Emmett off the curl, got that. Emmett one more time. Four points in the first half, then had nine points in the first two minutes of the half. Tech had its first lead of the game, but the Aggies, they have an answer. Antoine Wright is all right. That's good for three, and Wright, well, that's good for three. And, well, if you get tired of watching him, you could always just run out there and try and guard him. That's right for three, and he keeps he's standing in the same spot every time. Aggies up five, and then Wright from a lot closer with the clincher. Drives all the way in, and hey! How about that for highlight real action? The freshman is actually taking the ball game over for Texas a and Man, I just started to run off the court. I mean, it felt like the game was over as soon as that happened. And, but it was a great dunk. And it should be on Sports Center. And it is. Just ask and receive. Texas a and wins at 64-59. Bobby Knight now 7.99 and 303. Knight comes up a loser in his bid to become the sixth coach in Division I history to win 800. The previous five all won their first bids at 8-0-0. Both Pat Summit, Jody Conrad did so in January. Next up for Tech, Nebraska on Wednesday at home. So neither side undefeated heading into Saturday's game, but first place in the Pac-10 still at stake. That's important. Plus, the Bears also a little bitter about last season when they lost to U of A three times, including a 46-point KO in Tucson. Cats haven't dropped both weekend games at home in 19 years. Watch Jason Gardner. He can shoot and make three-pointers. I'll take all three, thanks. Gardner, 18 points on the night. Minutes later, it's not a good pass inside. Luke Walton gets the ball in transition to Salim Stoudemire hitting the long three. Is there any other kind? Arizona by 18. 12 minutes left in the half. Cats up 13. Gardner bounce pass the floor is your friend to Rick Anderson. Well, you can watch Brother Anderson finish. He had 15. Next, Arizona. Possession where Alley Ooping, Hassan Adams. Arizona wins it 95 to 80. They lead the Pac-10 now at 8 and 1. Sixth rank Oklahoma with his hands full in the little apple and a regulation. Oklahoma up one. Kevin Book out drops a three-point game. His dad's there. He's pleased. Kansas State, though, the possession. Seconds left. Missed there. Tim Ellis, get it to him and get it up. 82-79 is now 82 all. Let's play more. Bonus basketball. In overtime, OU down by two. Two-point lead for the Wildcats. Yosef Zendre down low, sinks the layup. Oklahoma ties it at 86. Now, how to close out a victory? Calvin Sampson, well, don't have your best player foul out of the game. That would be one in Hollis Price. He fouls out. That's five. There's your bench. Okay, next tip. Don't foul with a four-point lead. Oh, they just foul. Frank Richards drive. K-State sinks a couple free throws. It's a two-point lead. Also, don't give up the offensive rebound. Jared Hart misses intentionally, and there's the offensive rebound. Oh, goodness. Take another look. Perhaps Zendre here fouls Hart, but the guy in the striped shirt doesn't call it. There is no foul, so it remains 91-89. 
Finally, don't have your pass picked off, allowing the desperation shot by Purvis Pasco and off the backboard, harmless enough. OU, get on a plane and get out of town. 91-89, they win. Let's keep in the Big 12. Number 13, Kansas, visiting Nebraska. First half, Nick Collison misses and Kirk Heinrich doesn't. The Heinrich maneuver, he had 17. Second half, Keith Langford on the wing, driving. Oval 17 for Langford. Kansas up 17, looking for their ninth straight one against Nebraska. Later, Heinrich, Aaron Miles, Collison. Collison 14. Kansas wins big. Huskers' worst ever loss in the Devaney Center, which opened in 1976. Buffalo's roaming into the Herd Center. CU, Mizzou, Tigers, seven straight wins over Ralphie. Time winding down in the first half. Ricky Clemens from right smack dab in the middle of the state. Hits it for 337-35, Mizzou at the half. Ten seconds left. Michelle Morandis hits the off-balance three, and now Colorado down just one. Six seconds left, 73-70, be careful. Michelle, one more time to tie. No! And Missouri holds on to win at 73-70. Minnesota celebrating the 75th anniversary of Williams Arena hosting Michigan second half. Jeff Hagan up and under, and he's fouled. Hagan just taking over along the baseline here. Nice second effort by Jeff Hagan, and still more Hagan. Gophers up 11 on Hagen's third straight three-point play. He scored 11 points in a row, finished with 12 for the game. Homeboy blowing up. 30 seconds to go. Rick Rickard to Jerry Holman. Holman at 18. Flava. 17. Some tasty flavor. That's flavor with an A. Minnesota wins 87-80. Indiana's lost its last couple, and now they got to go to Freedom Hall in Louisville. That's tough. First half, Indiana control. Tom Coverdale, George H. throwing down. Hoosiers by nine. And Coverdale showing you his stroke. He had 14 in the game. Indiana by eight at the half, but you know, Ricky will coach him up. Second half, Louisville down three. Cue the comeback. Francisco Garcia is arrowed, sets the pick, and then just stays after it. Gets the ball. Oh, he can't finger roll and foul. He had 23 points. We're tied at 70 after the free throw. More Louisville. Kendall Dartz's rebound. I'll get that, thanks. That's just a rebound opportunity. Louisville up one. More Dartz's. Oh, Dartz. That's from way out. He had 8.6 boards, Louisville up six to Quan Dean. He wants a little of that. Cardinals up five. Now on defense, Ricky. Love it. Tom Coverdale, the ball, not anymore. Dean's got it. The other way, Barry's a three-pointer. Dean, six points, all of them coming and part of a 17-0 run that Louisville used to close the game. Hoosiers dropped their third straight. 95-76 is your final. What is it about Georgetown and Notre Dame? These two love multiple overtimes. 69 apiece, 14 seconds left in South Bend. Nobody wants to take a shot. The Hoyas looking like Sacramento in game seven against LA. Somebody shoot. <laughs> oh, they don't even get a shot off. Boy, we're going to overtime. That's brutal. Time winding down in OT. Chris Thomas, two of his 24, Irish up three. Last chance for the Hoyas. Drew Hall for the tie. Even at 82, but hold on. Still some time here, Chris Thomas, off balance three. This for the win. Won't stay down. We're going to double overtime. And remember February 9th of last year, last two these two hooked, last time these two hooked up, the MCI Center. Quadruple overtime. Matt Carroll of three. He had 30 last year, had a career high 36 this year. G-Town desperation three. Irish won that one. Mike Bray spoke about this one. Something about the Hoyas. We just keep playing for like two, three hours. Back to Saturday. Double OT, under a minute to go. Mike Sweetney. Career high, 38, 15 rebounds. Craig Escherich had no comment. Five seconds left out at 92. Torian Jones misses the first. This one for the lead. Knocks it down. Irish up by one. Drew Hall. Last second, three. Drew trying to win it. Notre Dame wins 93-92 in double overtime. Irish have won 14 straight at home. They're 18 and three. Boston College at UConn. BC's Andrew Bryant playing with a heavy heart. His mother gravely ill, recently taken off life support. And there with his first touch of three, a little something for mama. How about another one? It's T 
teammates, please. BC up 26 to 9 early. Bryant, one more time, 9 points. 3 of 3. <laughs> three pointers in less than a minute. Finished with 14. Later in the first half, UConn down 22. Let's watch Troy Bell. He's cherry picking. Going the other way. Got a head start. UConn not getting back in transition fast enough. Bell 17 points at that point. UConn had 14. Second half, UConn trailing by 28. Talik Brown laying. And again, Craig Smith beating him down. This is a good old-fashioned fanny whipping right now by the Eagles. The worst fanny whipping ever for UConn at Gamble Pavilion, 95. Leading the nation with assists at 19.4 per game, and Chris Daniels setting up his buddy Jarvis Hayes. Kids, always remember to shut the back door. There's Hayes. That's a high percentage shot when you shoot from that close. Later in the first half, more illustration shows Steve Thomas going to set up in the high post. Get the pass. Chris Daniels, he's cutting back door. He'll make it as well. Dogs, 13 assists in this one, led by 11 at the half. Late second, though, tied at 54. Brandon Vincent. He'll shoot from in close. Bulldogs by two. I guess they're all dogs. Three minutes left. Georgia down five. Ezra Williams gets hot. Ezra for three. Ezra. Again, the hot shooter is always good to guard. Williams nailed him. Nine straight points as Georgia wins at 67 63. See Orlando Tubby Smith on the road to South Carolina. Jules Camara sets up his buddy Marquise Estelle down low for the lip. Keith Bogans on baseline. Now it was 21 20 when this whole thing started to get out of hand. Bogans, Gerald Fitch, easy two. Nine points for Fitch. Chuck Hayes, he's creating a rebound opportunity for Eric Daniels, who had 14. Then from the outside, Bogans, team's leading scorer, averaging 17 per game. Fitch, he's left wide open for the triple. Got it. More work inside. Estelle. Bunny for falling over. Cats 57 first half points. They led by 25. All this you see here, part of a 26 to 4 run. Gamecocks buried 87 69 is your final. LSU at Alabama tied, usually fine at home. Second half, Alabama up five. Mo Williams drives. Pretty reverse by Mo Williams. Alabama up 13. Palace Temple finds Ronald Dupree. For the dunk. Love the low angle video. 11 point game, especially from the far end. But now you got to be aware of defense. You go the other way. And well, here comes Mo. Finds Irwin Dudley for the dunk. 13 point game again. Nine points when Daryl Mitchell drives. Blocked from behind by Antoine Petway. And Mo. Mo Williams. 27 points for him. And Bama wins a 75 66.